J.K. Rowling is forcing an impossible decision on Harry Potter fans. With the Hogwarts framing Legacy. here is incredible. Yes. J.K. Rowling is forcing her fans. I mean, I, I like was aghast at this because she probably has like very little idea of what Hogwarts Legacy even is other than the fact that she's going to get royalty checks off of it. Well, I mean, that, that that's an interesting question because she was so hands on with the movies. She was so involved in the movie process. But yeah. how much can she really know about video? Like what if somebody's like learned to code to her and she like had to go learn to code? Well, right now she basically just has a, a licensing approval team that approves these yeah. projects for her that are like ancillary to the books and films. Yep. So... She likely has like very little clue about what Hogwarts Legacy really is. People are really excited about it, though. It's also funny, too, because uh, I pointed out earlier, I said it feels like they're all going through the five stages of grief, trying yeah. to accept that they're either going to have to buy the game and support somebody they consider to be transphobic or they're going to have to miss out on something that they love dearly which is anything to yeah. do with harry potter we we already covered part of this story because there was this trans youtuber slash streamer that tweeted uh any support of new harry potter franchise merch or any products related yeah. to harry potter that you buy new now is actively harming the trans community because you're giving money to jk rowling any of them at all yeah. So she, so yeah, like you're generously allowed to keep your old Harry Potter merch and your old books. Well, yeah. But if you buy anything new, yeah. then you are a transphobe. It's kind of like the argument that I always made that I said it was easier for me to watch. Like, if I find out that a celebrity is nuts on Twitter, it's easier for me to like watch it. it I consider it easier now for me to watch it all. I can watch somebody who I know is nuts on Twitter. It doesn't bother me when I watch it. But for a long time, it did. It bothered me when somebody would say something crazy that I disagreed with, and then I'd have to watch something new that they came out with, and it would bother me. It would, it would affect how I saw the performance. That doesn't really happen anymore. But it never affected how I saw the material that they made before they made that comment. That feels like they're gra they're like, I'm grandfathering in the old books. I'm yeah. grandfathering in the old shows. How does it relate to streaming, though? Because what if you like want to watch Harry Potter on streaming and you pay your subscription every month? Does that yeah. contribute to that? Or is that only contributing to Warner Brothers, who is then paying J.K. Rowling the license to use it? Yeah, it's uh, a very like Soviet Union snitching <laughs> kind yeah. of brain dead take where, you know, you can do this as long as no one finds out. Yeah. Then, you know, it's permissible as long as it's a secret. Oh, I'm sure a lot of them do like in private. They're yeah. Like, it's, it's like it's their little secret between them and their tablet, them and their their video yeah. games. So, like they're like, uh, like, what was it like last time we were talking about? Like they're like hiding stuff from their bookshelves so that people wouldn't know that they had the books. Yeah. Like so so we're like seeing these people uh, in the case of Hogwarts Legacy basically having an aneurysm trying to figure out yeah. whether or not it's ethical to buy this video game. The video game is, is what people are calling like Red Dead Redemption in the Harry Potter universe. I was kind of hoping it would be more like Grand Theft Auto <laughs> in the Harry Potter universe. That would be a lot more interesting to me. But, um, you know, it looks interesting and really well made. And everyone who wants to buy it is just like denying to themselves that they want to buy it. Yeah, they they, they can't admit like, to themselves. Yeah, like claiming that it's a, a poor, poorly made product. It's going to be buggy. Whatever. That was my favorite part. That was like, like the come ultimate on. cope. They've been making this thing since 2017, which, by the way, is before J.K. Rowling ever received any scrutiny for yeah. like comments about gender ideology it's or also anything just something like that. it's also just something you say when you're when you want to hurt somebody's feelings not because there's actually any evidence to it it probably will have bugs but it's not like this person will know firsthand that that mm -hmm. was the case they're saying that because they don't like her mm -hmm. that's that's and the part i found funny as usual the mental illness is concentrated on reddit so there's this subreddit called gaming circle jerk in which uh there was a post that said a nice reminder from your mod team <laughs> that this woman is a turf jk rowling and everyone who commits to supporting her economically is also a transphobe in the context of buying this game and then they got a huge reaction from a lot of harry potter fans who disagreed yeah and then the mods just t just banned all of them i got a question <laughs> I, got, I, I, just I got mass an, banned thousands of people i got an honest question for you and the chat how many people do you think outside of twitter 
and the space that we operate in here, how many people do you think, if you asked them, what's a turf? Do you think that they would actually know what the hell that meant? No normal person walking on the street and that you find knows what turf means. I think it's a shame that even J.K. <laughs> Rowling knows what turf means. I mean, that's kind of my, my point is like, Mary they, turf think miss. The, they think the product is made for them. The product is not made for them. The product is made for the people not on Twitter. The product, if anything, the product is made for the normies. They use you and take you for granted as someone they assume will then promote it good or bad because you're so heavily invested in it. But they're not building it with you in mind. They build these things with normies in mind. Yeah, I, I was, I'm not the biggest fan of uh, the whole fandom culture around Harry Potter and other franchises that kind of infantilizes adult yeah. enthusiasts of these stories. Like, I think that there is a dignified way to enjoy the stories and movies and books that you love without, like, being a mindless consumerist about it. I've noticed that Harry Potter has become kind of a holiday tradition. It's really? becoming a Halloween to Christmas type thing where they start advertising it more on the streaming services around the holidays. And I see lots of like TikToks and videos. Thank you. Well, it's the, there's the costumes with Halloween. Yeah. But then. There, I see a lot of TikToks and stuff of like uh, like couple. It's like you know, I love normie TikTok and I love normie Instagram. And it's like uh, any like this first sign of snow, they like jump in on the couch and Mm -hmm. Put on a warm blanket and watch Harry Potter movies all weekend. It's like the there's this great video I was watching this weekend of this guy who talks about millennials about how they they've like um, they become infatuated with the idea of having no life. I don't have a life. I just yeah. sit home and watch documentaries. And it's this guy in the in the crowd as he keeps saying this. He's like at his graduation, and then the guy's like, "Yeah, we do stay home and watch our documentaries." And it's like they brag about having no life for someone their age. Because right. it's like, that's like that's like a thing. But that's like a big part of it is like Harry Potter's kind of become synonymous with this time of year. Like, so, I haven't like, noticed that as much, but like you're more of a you're a fan of of the original books and the movies, right? I mean, I don't watch the movies anymore, but I, I still love the, I haven't read the books in years. But I, I like I love the idea of loving the movies, but I never did love them. <laughs> I, I remember that like a couple of years ago, I turned on the first Harry Potter film and I had not read any of the books because I was not allowed to read any of the books or watch any of the movies growing up. Yeah. But I started the new, the the first one. I got like 15 minutes in or less and yeah. I was just like, what is happening? Yeah, the, the movies <laughs> make no, no sense. Idea. The movies are made with the understanding that you've read the books. Like, if yeah. you, there, there's a great, I've mentioned this guy before. There's a guy named Dominic Noble who does a series called Lost in Adaptation where he watches movies and reads books and then compares the two. And he points out all the places in the in those movie series. He has, it's called like the Potterthon or something where he goes through all the books and all the movies. And he points out, like, this wouldn't make sense to you if you hadn't read it, this, like, this, like. And if you've read it, you your mind fills in the gaps yeah. there. But also, speaking of the movies, guys, there is a rumor now that they are going to reboot the Harry Potter movies. And I want this to be, like, this is my point. This will be where the shoe drops for all the people, all of you people that have loved um, or have hated watching properties, properties you love get destroyed and then have people say it, either it wasn't made for you or why do you care if they recast it? Why do you care if they race swap? Why do you care if they gender swap? This is the movie series that will finally the help. ultimate test. Because these people who are saying these things to you don't have book franchises that they love. Yeah, I think it's all like wokeness for thee but not for me yes. and my special... Like my my love for this franchise, yeah, can't be tainted by your wokeness, but like everything else can can die. So once this movie comes out and Harry Potter is uh, Afro Caribbean and gay, you will find out that the people suddenly do have a problem with the fact that uh, that they've raced and gendered up because it's their it's what they love. Yeah, it's, I it's think what a lot of people a lot of people are already getting tested right now with the Hogwarts legacy controversy mm -hmm. but I see a lot of them responding like I I'm sorry I don't care what JK Rowling has tweeted I'm buying this game yeah one person said if you think playing Hogwarts legacy is the most morally ambiguous choice I've ever made I have some <laughs> setting news for you As I love it 
<laughs> they said f that lady for being mean to y'all on the internet but i'm gonna be learning to make spells and fly on a broom at 144 <laughs> frames per second that just, it is what it is isn't that just gloriously normal yeah like gloriously like yeah good for you but i'm gonna be over here doing my thing like what a relief uh another person said on the other hand i canceled my hogwarts legacy purchase got too caught up in the hype and then jk rowling reminded me again why i just need to stop close the book on harry potter for good and then they posted this screenshot of jk rowling tweeting mary turfmas earlier this month <laughs> that is kind of cheesy that it, was like okay it, way too on the nose um is there is and there, then um, i saw like this someone tweeted a, a screenshot from a mary sue article that was like 10 things you can buy instead of wasting your money on Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. And one of the things that they recommended was a Harry Potter themed wand dildo. So, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> the best they can do <laughs> coming up with alternatives uh, for the video game. Uh, not is, interested. Is there any franchise or anything that you care about that you that you would feel this close to that you're connected to in a way that you don't feel like the author's uh, the, like if the author made comments that you disagreed with would affect your view of the material? Literally every author of every book that I like and every singer of every, you know, band that I like or every actress or actor in a show or movie that I like yeah. has opinions I vehemently disagree with. It's it, not that big of a deal. I feel like we're actually blessed to have that ability to like understand early on that your worldview doesn't have to be shaped by the people who create the media that you like. Right. Because it kind of forces you to question, not just question your own beliefs, but think more critically of others. Because otherwise people just point, click, consume and don't think twice about it and just agree with whatever they hear. And, you know, it's almost not even their fault because society has been programmed and designed in such a way at this point that it's like you just buy and consume all the time. Mm -hmm. and you don't realize how much there is out there that if you looked into it a little bit deeper, you might disagree with. I just um, was talking to my dad on Christmas, and we were talking about uh, uh, Twitter. And he, he had no, like, I was like, we, I, we were talking about why the media is so evil. I was like, do you have any idea what the Twitter files are? He says, no. I'm like, that's why the media is evil. Because you don't know what they are. Because you have no idea what's going on. But we had to see, like, that information has to be sussed out. You have to go search for it. Most people aren't out there searching for information. So if a celebrity says something that sounds good on the face of things, they just accept that as like, yeah, I agree. Because it's all platitudes. J.K. Rowling's like that for the most part. She was like that for the most part until trans-exclusionary radical feminism. I don't think that people should be sussing out all of that information about the properties they like because it would be a mind numbing and fruitless task yeah. because I mean th like this this one tweet said enjoy squandering $70 every one of us sane people will be playing games that don't contribute to a transphobe's income like what yeah. you're not realizing is that there are you know people you would consider transphobes involved in literally every project or every company that you support what about because, crypto transphobes who just don't tell you they're transphobes right like, exactly like there i'm sorry but there are people who you would not like yeah. ev in every corner of society i don't think that you would even be happy if you heard like what your faves are saying in you know polite company yeah when you're not allowed to listen it's just like a cognitive dissonance that they have about about authors that part's that really like. funny too because the whether people want to believe it or not the world hasn't changed that much no. and your conversations in the real world are vastly different than the ones that happen online just because of the nature of transcript communication means that there's a record of everything and everyone says stuff at the very least you're more you're less guarded with what you say in the real world because you know that it's not going to be screenshotted and shared with everyone around the world but it's, it's funny, I was thinking about today, everything we communicate with is fake. This is a little bit of an aside. Anytime, like I was looking at these old photos, I was looking through an old photo album of, um, I had like this thing of, it's like old candid photos taken of like actors on movie sets back when people were still taking photos on like 35 millimeter film, right? And just think about it this way. If you ever, like nowadays you'll never get that again because you take the picture twice. How often do you just take a picture on your phone of yourself or of somebody else once? 
no, 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 you retake it. Oh, that doesn't look right. We have to take it again. The world is not as different in the real world as it was before, but everything digitally is a hundred times more fake. You mentioned a, a bar made just for non-alcoholic drinks. Yeah. I think like a more lucrative idea might be a, a bar or like some kind of space where you are not allowed to bring Your cell phone. phones. Yeah. It's at all. Drake parties. Is that true? Uh, I mean, a lot of rappers, yeah, you have to check your phone at the door. I, I think that's good for human interaction. I mean, maybe not with, like, celebrities. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think any time no, no. a celebrity doesn't want to record normal something. People. Yes, yes. No, normal among, people. Among normal people. Uh, like, it, it feels that way. And, like, you're really good about this. Like, you are not attached to your phone. You're very, very good about like you live like when when we're talking, you're me and you are talking and like you go around. You don't have your phone everywhere on you. Most people aren't like that anymore. Most people have their phone on them all the time mm -hmm. or their phone is always in their hands. Yeah, right? I, I find it like a highly overstimulating and unpleasant most of the time. So. And it gets worse the longer. Maybe that's just my like hint of of the tism in me that makes me put it down but it's i mean it's the same thing for like like i have less self-control but like i have to eventually go out and skate because it's like if i'm on, if i'm at the house even if i'm working i'm on my phone too much right and then and sometimes we have to use it because we yeah. are paying attention to online conversations uh in the chat uh so he says uh normal people what the f does that even mean today well what does normal even mean today i mean the people who don't know what turf means the yes. people who don't know about jk rowling's nuanced opinions about gender ideology it's like what my, my note card says opinions totally devoid of nuance totally void of nuance uh and then the other part was it was literally just it was like uh there's more nuance offline Right. So you're allowed to have more nuanced takes offline because you can tell tone of voice. And like if JK Rowling talked to most of these people in the real world, I bet you they could come to some type of middle ground. Mm -hmm. But the Internet doesn't allow that. And I mean, I don't even know about these people in the real world because we see how they behave yeah. in the real world quite often. Uh, are these like, the same people that are uh, throwing soup on paintings for climate yeah, change? I, I yeah, I couldn't care less what jk rowling thinks about gender ideology or feminism like i really i really don't care yeah the game looks cool though um i saw some people saying they're not gonna play it because it was made by uh by women so they're <laughs> they're really enlightened uh, dustin says none of know. us are normies yes he's right nobody in the chat uh and certainly not me and you are, are what you i consider you're myself keeping a, up with the joneses I, it's antithetical to being a normie i consider myself a normie in a lot of respects but um at least i think of myself as a normie like more so than most people in this space like i'm not overly like i have my opinions but I'm also very live and let live. And I'm like, you know what? It's whatever. I, I feel like a normie. Maybe maybe I'm rat wrong. Maybe the chat thinks I'm the opposite. Someone said normie. Mary's sensitive to the 5G. Yeah, it's like frying Could my be. brain. Could. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.